Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelorette Recap, a guy's review. We are wrapping up Katie Thurston's season as she approaches hometowns next week and following some other Bachelor Nation news. So if you like this channel and you enjoy what we're doing over here, please do me a favor and hit the like button and hit subscribe. We are inching our way to 40,000 subscribers, which is amazing. Last year at this time, we're only at 2,000 subscribers. And speaking of last year at this time, Claire Crowley was single at the beginning or midway through the pandemic, uh, becomes the uh, star of The Bachelorette this past fall, uh, closes out the season early, uh, at least on her end, Tasha became her replacement, because she found her guy in Dale Moss. They quickly broke up. He signed it like he was signing the Declaration of Independence, posted a photo on Instagram when he broke up with her. Then they got back together. Look, what we learned is that uh, there's an opportunity for growth as we uh, learn how to communicate with others and pursue love uh, amongst or against all odds, I should say. Well, we have been following Claire Crowley's um, discovery of her breast implant illness. Now, this kind of seems like sort of a pseudo, uh, you know, Ill illness in the sense that it's not like there's some giant growth or tumor or some obvious rash, just different uh, ailments that all, when led together, uh, people have realized breast implant illness can be something that you suffer from with like a chronic injury for a long time and not even knowing what it, what it is. So um, she has kind of figured that out. Now what happens, of course, I'm no, I'm no doctor. I don't know if you know this. I just recap the show. I'm not a doctor. But um, you put two foreign uh, objects into your body, your immune system's like enemies, and they, they show up with their pitchforks, you know, kind of like the angry internet mob, and they try to fight off these enemies. Well, these enemies, her breast implants, unfortunately... In cases where you want to get rid of breast implant illness, a lot of the symptoms go away very quickly once the enemy is removed. Uh, now, of course, some people, probably the majority of people that get breast implants, feel perfectly fine with them uh, until they don't. So we'll share uh, some cases of people that uh, had to get their implants removed, and you know it could be a large part of anybody's identity. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a physical change. You know, you've become one thing, and chances are you got your implants because you wanted to. Uh, do something for yourself that would, whatever the case may be, everybody's different, right? Now let's, but what's interesting with Claire, so let's go over here to the picture in picture. Uh, th so this was, let's go to her Instagram story. This Instagram TV got 1.3 million views and this is her on July 3rd. So less than a month ago, she kind of came out and said, hey, I realized what all my problems were. Everyone knows she's been in and out of the hospital. A lot of people questioned whether, you know, what it was, what was her ailment? What was she, uh, you know, trying to have a baby? What what was going on? Well, it turns out she was trying to figure out what was wrong with herself, amongst other things. And breast implant illness is what she learned. You can go watch that video. We already covered it. But today, or I should say last night, she posts this shot here. So I will read it for you. Let me just enlarge this a tad bit here. And, uh, all right, we're lined up there. She said, self-love is the act of giving a voice to your truth. So here is mine. As a child of sexual abuse, my young adult years were spent in unhealthy relationships, feeling unworthy of the good ones. It was a vicious cycle because the more I chose the wrong men who treated me poorly, the more I believed I wasn't good enough. Enter the breast implants. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't excited to get them. But the truth is, it was money that would have been better spent on therapy to heal my wounded heart. I ended up spending the money on therapy anyway. Cut to now. A woman who has learned to love herself deeply on the inside knows her worth and will fight for herself no matter what. I've learned the toxicity that these implants can cause on our bodies as it has done to mine. So I'm stepping away from something that no longer serves me. Not my heart and certainly not my health. Surgery is this week. We're taking it back to Claire 1.0, who is lovable and worthy just the way she is. It's a very nice inspirational message that she should have used the money on therapy. And listen, it doesn't, it doesn't mean you can't do both. It doesn't mean you can't get breast implants and also work on yourself. But in her case, she realized she was trying to uh, replace feelings or, or improve physical. And of course, this issue can come from many different places. This internal belief that I'm not good enough the way I am, it can come because of the way your parents raised you. It can come from bullies growing up or a sexual assault. There can be a whole bunch of things, just society in general, you know, nothing but, you know, you know, Claire, you know, you're growing up in the 90s, all the milk ads you know remember those milk ads are just busty women you know the pam anderson's of the world there was just this bar set that you had to get to and i think she she realized like others do that uh, she no longer needs the uh the boobs to do that 
or the, the implants, I should say. And like I said, again, some people feel perfectly fine with them. Everybody's different. Joel Fletcher um, uh, responded with a couple of hearts. Um, and then, uh, you know, so some, you know, of course, Bachelor Nation has a slew of, uh, uh, of um, f- alumni and some people have breast implants and some don't and some have had them removed. So we'll get into that right now um, to talk about uh, who, has, who have had them removed. Benoit wrote such a powerful move. Claire, beautiful inside and outside. You are strong. Uh, let's see. Do we get a message from Dale? I'm sure Dale sent a message, although we haven't heard much from Dale. I don't know if he's in there. He responded to her last post. Of course, uh, uh, Dale was with um, uh, Tyler Cameron over the weekend doing an event. I didn't see Claire with him. Um, anyway, he's in there. He's in there. So Caroline Lunny posted about her breast implants. I wanted to show you this. Caroline was on Bachelor and Bachelor in Paradise. And let's go to what she said, and we'll read a couple of comments, because Claire is not alone. There are plenty of people that have had uh, either the explant surgery or similar issues. So she said... Breast explant surgery with uh, David Dran- Drankin, MD, was a success. Warning some graphic photos, but um, I don't think these photos are too bad. I already looked through them, so let's go through them here. Let's read her post. Um, Caroline said, breast explant surgery with was a success. Warning some graphic photos. The last few years, I've just felt off. I felt way too old for my age. I, by the way, she's 31. Can you believe she's so young? I was super forgetful of, like... Felt like every memory was a daze. My back ached. My bra's too tight. Literally, LOL. My joints ached. My muscles ached. I felt like a 90-year-old woman hobbling around disguised as a 20-something. I was exhausted all the time. As if it wasn't bad enough, my anxiety and depression were through the roof. I had always had anxiety here and there that would creep in, but never this bad. Not to the point where I would be hiding under a desk to see comfort in a small space or army crawling to my shower because I physically couldn't walk, battling with suicidal thoughts and hurting myself more often than I care to admit. I just thought I was broken. I didn't get why this was happening to me. My health issues continued to get worse and worse. As I learned early last year that I had a low ovarian reserve and that at only 29 years old, I had the hormone levels of a 45-plus-year-old woman and that I was in the early stages of autoimmune disorder. I am too young for this. I felt like I couldn't catch a break and couldn't, um, and couldn't figure... Go to the next page... Um, I feel like I couldn't catch a break and couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. As I dove into research to be proactive with my fertility health, I learned so much about the toxins that surrounded us. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm losing my space here. I learned so much about the toxins that surround us in our everyday life and how those toxins are destroying our endocrine system and what it's doing to our hormones. I realized I was doing it all wrong. I was ignorantly welcoming all of these toxic ingredients into my ma- my makeup, my cleaning supplies, my food, my shampoo, my water bottles, my candles, everywhere. It was horrifying to see how many toxins are everywhere we look and to see what bo- what using those products daily is doing to our bodies. If we shouldn't even be drinking from plastic water bottles, then what does that mean for these plastic bags that live in my chest every day? I recently learned about breast implant illness. See comments for continued caption. So I, uh, let's see if there's any more uh, posts here. I think that's uh, the last one. Um, Breast implants are loaded with a disgusting amount of toxic chemicals and heavy metals and are leached into your bloodstream every day. Some people handle it better than others, but for but for some people, it can make you incredibly sick. It blows my mind how many people have never heard of breast implant illness, BII, and it was never discussed with me when I had my implants put in four years ago. I'm so grateful for my friend Linda Holiday sharing her story with breast implant illness. Is that Linda Holiday? Um, oh, that is Linda Holiday is Bill Belichick's girlfriend greatest coach of all time with breast implant illness and opening my eyes to what was right in front of me and encouraging me to follow in her footsteps and get my implants removed too. Thank you uh, for taking such good care of me for being such a champion for breast implant illness and educating women so that they feel empowered. I am so excited to start my road to recovery. I already feel like a new person and can't wait to finally turn my health around once and for all to each his own, but I'm desperately asking you to think twice before getting implants. Your health is far more important than anything else. Trust me. It's not worth the risk. I couldn't risk my health getting any worse, and I couldn't leave them in knowing what I now know. You are so you are so beautiful, exactly as you are. Ditch the tits, lol, xoxo. Is that a term? Ditch the tits, because I would love that to be like my tag phrase. Hi, I've been Dave Neal, and don't forget, ditch the tits. All right, everybody. Okay, you know, I don't know. Hey, look, right? This is where I feel sort of weird talking about it because, like, I'm a guy. I don't have breast implants. I have, I actually have a fairly large chest, not exactly muscular. 
I ate too many carbs and they go right to my chest. You know, wouldn't that be nice? You eat a bunch of carbs and you just get bigger boobs. Well, that's what happens to me. Ladies out there, you're like, I'll eat some bread. Yes, love to see it. Got my implants removed six weeks ago and have never felt better. Happy for her. So a lot of people are happy. Congrats. Were you having similar health problems to Caroline? Uh, you know, she said, why do I feel so old? So it's a, a, a clearly a weird fatigue and brain fog. You know, a lot of these pseudo, a lot of these ailments that aren't like a bone sticking out, it can be hard to know what the issue is. You know, my fiance, Tasha, doesn't have breast implants, but she felt a lot of these similar issues and she was certain it was Lyme disease. She was certain when she looked up Lyme disease that all the fatigue and the different chronic joint pain and issues that she had was because of that got tested. Sure enough, the last two or three years, she's been in protocol to try to remove the Lyme disease, which it never really goes away. It just goes into remission. But the, the point is, is that it's it's, we need to listen to our bodies because doctors and other people that just see us for how we are every day don't understand what's going on in the inside. So if you feel like, like, like a lot of these different issues and you do have breast implants, look farther into it if you do want to get better, you know? Um, so anyway, you know, it's one of those things. We live in a world where we say, hey, do whatever you want with your body. That's, that's the whole idea. Do whatever you want with your body. But then we also live in a world where it's like, well, have all the information you need to have to make those decisions. She said she never heard of breast implant illness. Um, a lot of people that I've talked to have said that they have heard of it. It's kind of one of those terms that's coming around now. Um, but it's good to see someone like Caroline posting such body positive things. Uh, here's to all my fertility shot bruises, all my explant scars, and all the mountains I've had to climb to become the happiest, healthiest version of myself. Sometimes this journey to the healthiest version of me feels like, WTF, why me? Why did this happen to me? But I know this all happened to me so I could tell you, tell you to advocate for yourself, to ask questions, to look into your fertility health and to look into breast implant illness because it's so much more common than we think. So push back when your doctors say no, push them to run labs, push them to do ultrasounds. It infuriates me. This isn't routine care, but it happened to me so I could tell you because even just one of you catching something sooner makes this all worth it to me. I got to agree. Tasha had the same issue with her Lyme. The first doctor, she, we live in Los Angeles. She ended up finding a Lyme specialist in Washington, DC. That's how dedicated she was to finding somebody who's going to treat her illness seriously. Too many doctors. And I know, I know we have doctors in the audience. Correct me if I'm wrong, but but it just seems like because of the insurance system, the, you know, the cost of insurance and the malpractice insurance and all that, it seems like general practitioners have to have too many patients so they don't have as much time with every patient. Does that make sense? So you see somebody and you go, well, take these pills, try this. They come back six months later, it didn't work. Well, try this uh, birth control pill. Six months later, it doesn't work. And it's like, we're forced to go in these like chat rooms to find out what's wrong with us. And I get it. Your doctor can't see you one-on-one -on -one 40 hours a week wondering what's wrong with you. But, you know, do your own research. That doesn't mean go on WebMD and find out you have a headache. So you must have, you know, uh, you know, whatever, you know, you uh, some lethal disease. You know what I mean? But in some instances, you go to these chat rooms that they have on Reddit in different places. You find people that suffered from the same same things you're suffering through and you go oh my gosh i'm not alone and that's what the body positivity movement's all about that's what the movement of releasing shame for feeling like oh my gosh no one could possibly feel what i'm feeling spoiler breaking news somebody feels what you're feeling somebody's going through the same thing somebody's got a narcissistic ex-husband someone's got a crazy ex-girlfriend someone's got a uh, uh, breast implant illness story. Somebody's they've, it's, it's all, it's, it's been done. You have a community online. So please, if you do feel like you have any problems, Hey, join my community. Hey, we were talking about breast implant illness and I'm curious about the whole matter because as, as a guy who like, Hey, I'm never, I've never been, you know, for what it's worth attracted to implants. It's just never been something that's been something that has that has been my cup of tea. We're all attracted to different things, of course. So I'm not someone who says, oh my gosh, how could he get them removed? It's like, no, trust me. Every person knows this in a relationship. Whatever you can do to help provide a stage for your partner to flourish authentically, to be who they are and who they're meant to be, that is what you want your partner to do. Like, I'm sure Dale Moss, I mean, it's, 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 it's crazy to even say this, but it's like, I, I understand the irony and like the joke. It's like, oh, she had, she had breast implants and she landed Dale Moss. And then all of a sudden she's like, oh, these, I'm going to get rid of these fun bags. And he's like, oh, don't ditch the tits. You know, the whole scenario. That's not how it works. Like, that's not how it works. Trust me. She's dealing with anxiety. She's dealing with all these other issues. If 
the breast implant illness is a cause or a major factor in those issues, ditch the tits. Come on. I'm sure Dale's like, please, if it can help us lead a happier, more authentic life, he's fallen for her for who she is, and she doesn't need the uh, the added supplemental personality, if you will. It's a tough topic for me to talk about. What do I know about it? But you know, I know a lot of my audience, 95% women, have either had some of these issues or you have breast implants and you feel perfectly fine, but the day might come where you don't, and at least you'll know now, hey, why do I feel so lethargic? Why do I feel so old? Why do I feel uh, joint pain? Why do I feel all these different things or rashes or whatever? Hormonal levels are different. Well... Let's start with the the foreign objects in the uh, in the boobs, and maybe that's it. Okay, or maybe not. But anyway, uh, so good so good to see Caroline. So good to see Claire and everyone else support them and uh, normalize the discussion about how we treat our bodies and um, and uh, how we can share the different issues we're going through. I for sure would love it if Caroline and Claire started a podcast called Ditch the Tits. I think that would be great. So anyway, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Hashtag Ditch the Tits. Uh, Hollywood hottie Dave Neal is back in studio. Plenty of content to come. Live stream Thursday, 4 p.m. And a lot of other stuff. If you haven't caught it yet, I just released a video about Simone Biles. You know, when I make a story that's not Bachelor related, sometimes people don't see it. Uh, but, you know, the YouTube only shares certain content. So if you want to go check that out, I'll post a link for it. You can go check out my chat with some, my chat with uh, W be crazy. My chat about Simone Biles and her decision to put her mental health ahead of competing in the Olympics. And so uh, between Claire Crowley, Simone Biles, and all these other stories, the through line is authenticity, taking care of yourself, uh, mental health. We live in a world, we live in the richest country in the world. The least we can do is live every day like we, like we have richness where it counts on the inside emotionally, physically, taking care of these meat vessels that we use to get around. No point in winning the lottery if you have to, you know, uh, you know, take a rascal around town. Like, let's do our best to take care of ourselves, the one bodies that we have, and not shame others as they try to do the best with their bodies too. All right, folks, let me know what you guys think. We'll talk to you later. Bye now.